welcome to this video lecture, Study and Evaluation of Internal Controls. For this uh, video lecture, we will cover the following items. First, we have the auditor's consideration of uh, internal control in audit. So what will be the role of our study and evaluation of our client's internal control in the conduct of our audit procedures? So second, we will discuss the different components of uh, internal control. So using the integrated uh, framework by COSO or the COSO framework. So another, we will also consider the auditor's assessment of internal controls in audit. And uh, finally, we will close our discussion with uh, the communication of deficiencies to management and those charged with governance. So for the first section, we will cover the consideration of the auditor of the internal control system of our client. So for this, we will have PSA 315. So understanding the entity and its environment and assessing the risk of material misstatement as our reference. So the overall principle or overriding principle in this uh, part of our audit is uh, for us auditor to obtain understanding of the client's internal control, to plan the audit, and to develop an effective audit approach. So because uh, remember in our previous topic, planning an audit of financial statements, we discussed there the development of the more detailed audit plan. However, that detailed audit plan would not be finalized until the auditor will complete the study and evaluation of internal control, especially if this is a first-time audit. So what you will be accomplishing in this part in that part will be the draft detailed audit plan or draft audit program. So until we complete the study and evaluation of internal control. So remember that. So part of our understanding of our client's business include their internal control system. So what is the role of this consideration in our audit? Our objective as auditor in studying and evaluating the internal control system of our client would be number one, to identify potential misstatements in the financial statements of our client, to identify factors that will affect those risks of material misstatement, and to design our further audit procedures. Okay, so in short, in studying and evaluating the internal control, remember that uh, we will not be issuing an opinion on the effectiveness of internal control. So at least here in uh, the audit uh, practice in the Philippines, so because uh, we only issue opinion on the fairness of the financial statements. So we are not uh, doing integrated audit. So that is why we use internal control so to design the nature, the time, and extent of our further audit procedure. So in, in line with this, so what we are studying is the internal control system of our client. So we also have to understand what is the role of internal control system in our client. So internal control system is uh, designed and implemented by the management and those charged with governance of our client. So for them to be able to achieve the objectives of internal control. So which include number one the production of uh, reliable financial reporting to the effective and efficient conduct of their operations, including safeguarding of their assets. And finally, so the, their compliance with uh, rules and regulation. So these are the objectives of uh, internal control system being implemented by our client. So however, the scope of internal control system of, of our client are uh, too broad so because as uh, we have mentioned here so it's not only limited to the production of reliable reports so it will cover the entirety of their operation including compliance with laws and regulation so that is why as auditors so we have to consider the component or part of the internal control system of our client that will be relevant to our work which is uh, obtaining reasonable assurance about the fairness of the financial system. So among the internal control system of our client, we are particularly interested to their accounting system. So the accounting system of our client pertains to the series of uh, tasks and records of our client, the entity, so by which their transactions are processed as a means of maintaining financial records. So because this will directly affect our opinion about the financial statement. So since 
This is uh, the process that let the client uh, come up with their financial report or financial system. So this accounting system of our client identify, assemble, analyze, calculate, classify, record, summarize, and report transaction and other statements in their financial statements. Okay. So as mentioned, so the internal control system of our clients so extends beyond those matters which relate to the functions of the uh, accounting system. So we have to consider also their effect, direct or indirect, to the accounting system of the client, which is the one primarily responsible for the production of the accounting reports. So now let's discuss the next question. So we have the components of internal controls. So for us to be able to understand though, the internal controls of uh, our client. So we have to take it from the context of uh, a framework. No? So which is why here we will consider the internal control framework developed by the COSO. So the COSO is uh, the Committee of Sponsoring Organization of the Treadway Commission. So which, uh, among others, no, is a joint initiative of a different private sector organizations here in this uh, picture. So that uh, is uh, dedicated to providing uh, thought leadership through the development of uh, frameworks and guidance on enterprise risk management, internal control, and uh, fraud deterrence. So what this committee did basically is to come up with uh, a paper so about uh, internal control as a result of their research of different organization. So this framework of internal control is uh, the one being followed by our reference, PSA 315. So we understand this, uh, the internal control of uh, our clients, so using this framework. So according to this internal, uh, internal control framework by COSO, so there are different components of an effective and reliable internal control, so based on their study and research. And here are uh, these components. So we have number one, control environment. Number two, risk assessment. Number three, information and communication. Number four, control activities. And number five, monitoring. So consequently, these are also the aspects that we will be looking for when we study the internal control system of our client. So number one, we have control environment. When we say control environment, so it means the attitudes, awareness, and actions of management and those charged with governance. So concerning the entity's internal control and its importance in the entity. So in other words, this uh, sets the tone from the top. So by uh, the management and those uh, charged in charged with governance, you know, who shows an uh, example of uh, compliance and uh, the importance of internal control to all the people in uh, in the organization. No? So that is why control environment also includes the governance and uh, management functions and as mentioned that sets the tone of an organization influencing the control consciousness of its people. So that's why it's also called the tone from the top. So because for example, if the management and those charged with governance would show to its uh, people that they put importance or emphasis on complying with the company's policies. So most likely the people in the organization would adhere to those policies set by the management. So on the other hand, if uh, the people in the organization will see the people from the top, the management in those charged with governance, so this get disregarding uh, the policies of the company themselves, then they would have no incentive of following them as well. So that is why this control environment is considered as the foundation for all other components of internal control, so providing discipline and structure. So when we assess the control environment of our client, so how do we go about in uh, assessing whether the client has a good control environment or not? So we have what we call the different uh, aspects of the control environment, so which will help us assess you know, this uh, aspect of the internal control of our clients. So control environment consists of uh, these elements. So first, we have communication and enforcement of integrity and ethical values. 
So some evidence that uh, we can obtain as far as our assessment of client's control environment, so whether the client uh, enforce this particular element, the communication and enforcement of integrity and ethical values. So we can uh, check whether the client uh, implements a code of conduct. So that's one uh, evidence that we can use. So we can also check how the client deals with others, with their employees, with their suppliers, with their customers, with their investors, with their auditors. So this, their attitude with other people will also uh, show no, how, how this uh, element of their work environment uh, works. And uh, finally, if uh, they set realistic and fair performance measures. So let's say, for example, they set a very unrealistic performance measure for their employee, then that's another way of saying that they are inviting their employees to commit fraud, no? to, to achieve that unrealistic uh, performance measure, for example. So this goes to show how the client communicate and enforces their integrity with their in their people or among their uh, people. So another important element of control environment is the client's commitment to competence. So competence reflects uh, the knowledge and skills needed to accomplish that define one particular job. So one evidence that we can check so to validate this element among the client's control environment would be the use or non-use of the client of a job description to define the responsibilities of their people. So we can check their HR policy no, or their uh, uh, their human resource uh, department, whether they use job description, so in assigning responsibilities to their personnel. So we can also analyze the knowledge and uh, skills required to perform one's job and uh, compare it. So whether the person assigned to that job would really have that competence and skill you know, to discharge his or her responsibility. So next, another element of control environment, we have the human resource policies and practices. So human resource policies and practices pertain to hiring, orientation, evaluation, counseling, promotion, compensation, and even disciplinary actions. So these HR policies and practices will send message no, their, to their personnel. So regarding the clients or the company's expected levels of uh, integrity, ethical behavior, and competence. So some controls that we can validate on this uh, part of the element of control environment, including uh, ex the extent no, to which the client uh, client's uh, policies and procedures are in place, relating to hiring, training, promotion, and compensation of their people. So we can check the human resource department again, so whether they have appropriate policies so with regard to this aspect of human resource practice. So how they hire people, so what are the, the procedure of the client in hiring their people, in training their people, even in promoting their people and uh, determining their compensation. So we can also validate the existence and appropriateness of uh, disciplinary actions among the company. So when an employee or a personnel committed an infraction against uh, the entity's policies, so what are the disciplinary actions? So that's another evidence that we can obtain. So we can also check the adequacy of our personnel candidate background check done by the client whenever they are hiring people or promoting people. Okay. And uh, whether there is an adequate personal retention and uh, promotion criteria, including performance evaluation. So most companies, normally they have this uh, periodic performance evaluation procedure now within their company. So some companies do it annually, other companies do it semi-annually. So the presence or absence of that performance evaluation procedure would uh, tell a lot about the client's uh, human resource policies and practices. So how formal or informal their uh, human resource policies are. So next, we have assignment of authority and responsibility. 
So this pertains to how an organization assigns authority and responsibility for uh, their operating activities. So what we can check could include the policies and procedures relating to appropriate uh, business practices of our client, knowledge, experience, and resources necessary out uh, necessary to carry out the uh, duties of the different personnel. So including how the client communicate no these objectives and expectation together with their accountabilities to the personnel or to their employees. So again, the relevant department here to be evaluated by us would still be a human resource uh, department. So how, for example, uh, duties, responsibilities, accountabilities are being assigned to different personnel. Another element of control environment, we have the management's uh, philosophy and operating style. So in this case, we can ask questions such as uh, what is the management's uh, risk appetite? So what are their attitudes no, over different accounting alternatives? So we can see uh, their, their mindset regarding uh, their philosophy and their operating style. So the controls that we can check with respect to this element, so include uh, what are the different uh, nature of our uh, risk being accepted by the client management or their risk appetite. So how, how frequent no, would be the interaction between the top management, the senior management, and the operating management? And uh, what is the attitude and actions of the management toward financial reporting? So are they too aggressive? Are they conservative or uh, somewhere in between? Okay. So another element of control environment, we have uh, participation by those charged with governance. So control environment is uh, particularly heavily influenced by the board of directors and the audit committee of the entity. So they are what uh, we consider as uh, those charged with governance. Now the extent of the involvement of uh, these people, top management, will uh, normally dictate you know, the commitment of the entity to involve its uh, management in the entity's commitment to strong internal control. So some controls related to this element would include the, how independent is uh, the management, for example, from uh, those uh, in charge with governance. So how frequent would be the meeting and timeliness you know, of those meetings so between the senior level officers of the client, the chief uh, executives, for example, or officers, the internal auditors, and uh, the external auditors. We can also check the sufficiency with which information is provided to the board of directors or the audit committee, and the sufficiency and timeliness within which the board of directors or audit committee is uh, apprised of important or sensitive information. So we can check here the minutes of the meetings of uh, the board of directors, the audit committee. So to check this uh, part of uh, the control environment of our client. So finally, we have organizational structure. So organizational structure provides a framework within which the activities of the entity are uh, done to achieve their objectives, uh, plan their objectives, executes their strategies, no? how the management and those charged with governance control the activities of uh, the environment and uh, how they are monitored. So some evidence that we can obtain, including controls now affecting organizational structure include uh, whether the structure of the entity is appropriate or not. So because a uh, different organization would normally call for different uh, types of structure. So we can also check the adequacy of the definition of the responsibilities of uh, key management and uh, their understanding of it and the uh, adequacy of knowledge and experience of uh, their key managers. So those are some of the examples of uh, the different types of evidence that we can obtain so regarding this aspect or component of the client's internal control. The next component of internal control, we have the risk assessment process.